Dear students, in this video lecture, we will see the points related to genetic code and their importance in the molecular biology. This is commonly asked as a seven mark questions in your semester examination. The genetic code is a triplet code that is made up of three nucleotides. It can be of anything of a A, T, G and C. So they are the one that have been present there in the DNA. They specifies for any one of the 20 amino acids that have been present in naturally in the living organisms that is in the proteins. It has been shown that this code is a triplet wherein three nucleotides encodes for one amino acid that is a point which we have already discussed. Based on certain mathematical argument it has been recorded that a minimum necessary 64 codons could be present there in the living system. How they have arrived on into this value is based on four bases present as a three different triplets. So that is three different possibilities that has been indicated as the first position, second position and third positions of the triplet code. This can be well understood when you look at into a table that shows the various genetic codes present in the living organism. If you look at here, this is the first position and this one is the second position and the third position has been indicated here. Okay. So all these three things, if you make it, it will form into a total of 64 codons that codes for at least a 20 amino acids. Here, from the point itself, you can able to understand that is 20 amino acids are present. Then why we need to have a 64 different codons? So there comes a point of redundancy or synonymous or degenerate. It's a simple meaning that 20 amino acid can be just coded by 20 codon itself. However, here more than 20 codons, that is 64 different types of codons have been existing there in the nature. That is the meaning the codons are degenerate, redundant or synonymous in nature. Now you can able to see a stretch of an mRNA. So the mRNA has been coded and it is shown from a 5 prime to 3 prime end mRNA molecule. This mRNA is made up of different bases. That is it can be of A, A, U, G and C. That is instead of T it will be having a U there. So the way in which the bases present in the mRNA were referred as the codons. Say for example A, U, G is a codon. U, A, A is a codon. Okay. Like that a lot of different codons will be present there in the mRNA. That is mRNA genetic information could be read in the form of triplet codes. Here this triplet code is referred as a codon. And a complementary to the triplet code a term called anticodon is used. Thus the anticodon present in the tRNA is complementary to the codon that has been present there in the mRNA. Now we look at the points related to ORF. ORF is meaning open trading frame. That is it refers to a complete sequence of an mRNA when read from an initiation codon. Here the initiation codon refer to a codon made up of A, U, G. So this is a codon that codes for methionine or formal methionine is the one which acts as an initiation codon there in translation process. Apart from that, the other codons that have been present that codes for one or more amino acid. And finally, a termination codon is present. In the living system, three possible codons can able to act as a termination codons. That includes UAA, UAG and UGA. At the same time, the start codon is always of a AUG. Thus, the initiation and termination codons are read during the process of translation in a non-overlapping manner that could result in the production of a protein. In this frame, you can look at a open reading frame, a ORF that have been shown with a start codon followed by a stretch of codons that codes for 
respective amino acids that have been shown there in the downside and finally a stop codon in which the process of translation will be terminated. The next important part that the genetic code is, is this genetic code is universal. So this is again a uh, 7 or a 10 mark questions which should be asked there in the semester examination. The triplet in the mRNA are commonly read in a non-overlapping way. So this non-overlapping way of reading is the one which we have seen in the previous slide. So this is a non-overlapping way of reading the genetic code. So it has become clear that genetic code is very nearly but not quite universal. That is the genetic code is not same across all the living organisms present in the earth. So this supports a simple hypothesis that life has evolved from a single common origin. However, during the course of time, it has got diversified. So that is the reason why there is some small changes there in the genetic code. So for a long period of time, scientists thought that the genetic code is universal. However, certain discovery that took place in the year 1980 found that there is a slightly different codes were used by some organisms or some organal structure. One classical example is here the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the one that possess some small genome that are independent of the cell's genome. So they have their own genetic material that in turn codes for the proteins required for the cell. Say, if you look at the codon AUA, which commonly codes for isoleucine. However, it is coding for methionine there in the mitochondria. Some other classical examples were also listed here. Say for example, in plant mitochondria, the code CGG is coding for tryptophan, whereas universally coded for arginine in most of the organism. So like that, certain variation in the code has been existing. That is the reason why they said that the genetic code is not perfectly universal. There is some small variations have been existing. Now it is indeed known that some of other unicellular organisms, especially certain yeast, some prokaryotes found to have a different code that of the standard genetic code. Say for example, you look at the code UAA and UAG, which generally codes for stop codons there in all the living organisms. However, in certain protozoans, they are coding for glutamine. The last part of this lecture is related to decipering the genetic code. This is also asked as a 7 or 10 more questions there in the semester examination. Here, decipering genetic code meaning finding out what is the code that codes for what kind of amino acids? That is, what triplet is the one which codes for which amino acid? So for that, a lot of series of experiments have been designed and conducted by various scientists through which they have identified the genetic codes and their respective amino acids. Here, one of the important experiment is the one which is designed by Nirenberg in the year 1960 especially by using cell-free protein synthesizing system that has been obtained from E. coli to find out the genetic code. What is this cell-free system? It is the cell-free contents that have been taken there in the test tube that are all put together with the materials that are required for protein synthesis. That is, in a test tube, they will be taking RNA template, ribosomes, nucleotides, amino acids and certain stabilizing agents and energy that are all required for the protein synthesis process. Before starting into this thing, the RNA should be prepared as a synthetic long-chained messenger RNA. So when a polynucleotide phosphorylase is applied, when it is given with the nucleotide in the form of ADP, it will produce a homopolymeric synthetic mRNA making of A. If G is provided, it will start producing the homopolymeric mRNA of strings of G. Like that you can able to prepare for a UDP as well as for CDP. So here the discovery of a polynucleotide phosphorylase enzyme played a major role in the preparation of homopolymeric synthetic mRNA molecules. Say for example, if it is coding for a U alone containing mRNA, that 
will finally leads to the formation of phenylalanine amino acid. So on this basis, by using the homopolymer mRNA, they have identified which particular triplet code is coding for which particular kind of amino acid. So as an outcome of the experiment that is conducted by Nirenberg and Mathai found that when enzyme polynucleotide phosphorylase was used in a E. coli cell-free system which is made up of uranium diphosphates as a substrate molecule, they are able to obtain a product of poly-U containing messenger RNA. So this poly-U containing messenger RNA will in turn codes for phenylalanine residues as the amino acid during the process of translation. Further, Nirenberg and Mathai have used the same approach to find out what is the one that codes for a homopolymer of C. They found that the homopolymer of C in turn codes for polyproline amino acid and a polyadenylate containing synthetic mRNA can be able to code for polylysine. Thus, the triplet containing CCC will code for a amino acid proline whereas a triplet containing AAA will code for a lysine. Further, Nirenberg and Mathai have slightly modified the experiment in such a way they have started using mixed polynucleotide containing copolymers for the experiments. That is, they are using a one part of ADP and five part of CDP. That is an example. If you using the reactants of one part of ADP and five parts of CDP using a cell-free protein synthesizing system, you are able to obtain the following different kinds of triplets. Say for example, more number of CCC triplet will be present there and a less numbers of ACC, CCA and CAC kind of triplets will be formed. Very few in numbers of AAC, ACA and CAA triplets will be formed. And the triplet which is present in a very low amount there in this particular process is AAA. The reason is you are adding only a one portion of ADP. So you are getting only a very few numbers of AAA containing triplets. However, when you are giving a more number of CDP there, you are able to obtain more number of CCC triplet there in the particular experiment. So, by using the relative proportion of each type of ribonucleoside diphosphate, they could predict the frequency of any particular triplet codon that could be occurring there in the synthetic mRNA. So, in this way, they have found out all the 64 different kinds of codons that could be existing there in the living organisms. So, this is a table which shows that the codon and the particular type of amino acid that have been specified by that codon.